everyone, I am Blair from No Rolls Bard, and welcome to another episode of Board Game Cosplay. Today I wanted to create something a little different, as if there is really a normal on this show, and do something that would really challenge me. We're not putting a twist on this one because it's already going to be a hot mess as it is, no anime references, no video game references, just the straight up weirdness that is a hungry, hungry hippos cosplay. Going into this, I was honestly so scared. I will be using a lot of techniques that I've never even really looked into that much. And so I was really trying to hide this costume originally. First, I wanted to make it a Digimon hungry, hungry hippos. And then I was playing around with the idea of a Five Nights at Freddy's hungry, hungry hippos. But Adam said, no Blair, it's already weird enough as it is and basically forced me into making this design that is a muscular fursuit slash mascot costume thing, but hungry, hungry hippos. The suit will be made up of a few different layers. On top, you'll have the visible layer, which will be two different shades of the same color fabric. I'll be using polar fleece for this as it has a tiny bit of stretch and will hide the seams fairly well, but isn't too fluffy. Underneath that will be the muscle suit, which will be made up of upholstery foam shaven into muscles and glued on to the bottom layer, which will just be a shirt and some leggings. Also, did you know that the hippos apparently had names? I never realized this until this project, and I just want us to take a moment to appreciate these terrible names. First, we have the classic Hungry Hippo. Not very original, but hey, I guess one of them had to be named that. Second, the uh, potentially worst name, Veggiepotamus. Just let that sink in for a bit. Third, we have the one that I'll be using the color of, which is the Sweetie Potamus. And lastly, Bottomless Potamus, which is S tier. Anyways, moving on from that, I then had to really look at this design and figure out what would make it different from just a normal hippo's costume. And that I decided would be a tail mechanism that would make the head go up and down doing that chomping motion. I called in two of my very dear friends to help me wrap my head around the idea for this mechanism. Iza, who you'll recognize from my last episode of Board Game Cosplay and also her own cosplays, and also my friend Jerry, who is a fantastic cosplayer themselves and also a puppeteer. So here we have the Hungry Hungry Hippo. And as we all well. know, Cold the most important killer. thing about it, yes, look at those eyes. <laughs> As we all know, the most important thing about it is that it has this neck thing that goes up like that. What I'm imagining at the time now is having the lower jaw like attached to, to my lower jaw. Yeah. And then having some sort of like maybe um, like PVC pipes that like have something where if you press on the tail, it then like pushes that part up, which is then attached to the upper half of the head so that that, that just goes up and down and looks absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> if this is your lever, oh my God. you'll want two points here. <laughs> okay. uh, this middle point, I'm using nails because that's all that I have at the minute. Um, that will be attached into your main sort of larger outer pipe so okay. then whenever you push this it'll pivot as such yeah but then for this other hole you'll want your pipe with a notch like that that can <laughs> over sit on top of that you can fix it as so ba -ba -ba -ba. so that whenever this goes down whenever yeah. this is a fixed point that will Okay. Allow for that to move up and down, but gotcha. not be stuck like that yeah. as such. So this will have the ability to move backwards and forwards. Would it be possible, Jesus Christ, I don't think you're going to be able to make any sense of this, but... <laughs> oh, so Five Nights at Freddy's. Right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Would it be possible to just have one big pipe that is mm -hmm. like attached at multiple points? throughout my body that, just to make it that secure. would be easier yes yeah. you might you might need yeah. to cut more of a gap than you think you do because it's going to mm -hmm. need to be able to extend quite yeah it's going to have that yeah. um, and i think I also at the, at the top where you have like the little cross beam that goes inside the head mm. i think c given how wide that head is probably going to be like compared to your own head you might need to have like so you have like 
that's the like beam that's inside the head and then I think you might need something else going across it like a T so that it's like lifting all of the weight of the head right. at the same time rather okay. than just from one point trying to lift the entire weight of that head. Okay. With the general idea for the mechanism now roughly in my head, I got to work. However, before I get into making this project, I do need to give a safety warning. To go a bit Mythbusters on you, please do not try this at home or at least not all of it. By all means, make a sexy hippo costume. That's great, and I would love to see it, but do not make the mechanism part of it. The only reason I feel safe wearing this is because I'm around people who are helping me every step of the way, and we're keeping me from falling and seriously injuring myself. All right, with that out of the way, let's get to how I made it, but not how you're going to make it. I began by cutting my PVC pipe close to the length I would want it to be in the end. I knew I would need one shorter piece for the tail and one longer piece for the inside of the gutter pipe. With it cut, I then sanded down the edges so that they were nice and smooth. In order to fit the smaller pipe into the gutter pipe so that it could pivot, I needed to carve away a semicircle at the bottom. So I began by marking out how far I needed to sand and used my Dremel to remove material. To create the pivot point, I used nuts and bolts to hold the pipes together. To install these, I drilled holes through both sides of each pipe, then threaded the bolt through the holes. I then did the same thing to the top of this small pipe to create the attachment for the head. After trying it out, I realized the motion wasn't quite going up as far as I would have liked, so I added some plastic and cardboard triangles to the bottom of the mechanism so the pivot point would be a bit further away and therefore give the whole thing a bit more motion. In order to have this mechanism attached to me, I ended up creating a harness out of nylon webbing and buckles. I tried it on between each step to make sure everything was positioned correctly and sewed it all together. I added Velcro to the back of the pipe, which would attach to some Velcro at the back of the harness, and finally was able to try try the whole thing on. This is the weird mechanism um, that will be my tail and head. So we have this PVC pipe, which will be the tail, and that's connected to this pivot point here, which this all hot glued so that it won't come loose. Um, and I have some uh, nuts here as well, just hot glued in place so that the tail doesn't go completely all over the place. Um, and then we just have some cardboard and some plastic um, to make it so that the pivot point could be a bit further away to add a little extra length. This is going to be hidden by a massive hippo butt at some point. This PVC pipe, which has been sanded away there, is connected to the tail PVC pipe with another pivot point. And that PVC pipe goes all the way up to here. Nothing else is going on in here. This is just a larger gutter pipe, except for at the top here, I've added some EVA foam to try to give it that little junk um, motion. Then we have a another pivot point to another PVC pipe up here, which is just attached with some more elastic to try to give it a bit more bounce. We'll see if that actually works once we have the head on it, because obviously that's going to be quite a bit of weight, so I'm not sure if that's really going to work, but hey, I've tried. Isn't that what matters? This one is just going to be loose, so this is just going to be actually inside the head itself, which this will just connect into. We have a bit more elastic here at the bottom. Let me just turn this. Just attach to the back of this PVC pipe and to the bottom here, and that allows this, there we go. That just gives it a bit of tension so that it comes right back down into place like so. To hide all of the pipes, I covered the tail first in some black fabric by creating a small fabric sausage, putting that over the pipe and hot gluing it into place. With the tail done, I covered the rest of the pipe in the same blue fabric that I will later be using for the bodysuit. To hide the raw edges at the bottom, I folded them in and glued them into place as well. Finally, I finished it off by adding a bit of fluff to the tip of the tail and the mechanism was done. With the mechanism constructed, I could now move on to creating the muscle suit, which would be the foundation for the rest of the costume. To create the muscles, I found pictures of very muscular people and also similarly very muscular hippos. Please don't ask. 
basically I use these photos to get an idea of what all the muscles should look like, where they should go, and how many I should be making. With these in mind, I drew out some basic patterns onto paper and cut them out. I did the same thing for any areas where I would want to create a different shape to my body as well, such as the feet and the hands. For larger areas, I created a quick cling film pattern to make sure I was covering the right amount of space. Because I was using really thick upholstery foam, I cut out multiple strips which I hot glued together so that I could have a thinner piece to work with. If you're using thinner upholstery foam, you won't have to do this. Luna decided though that this was a great job for her to help out with and I absolutely appreciated the assistance. I mean, just look at her! With my new pieces of foam, I transferred my patterns and began cutting them out. With it first cut out, you will have the basic shapes of your muscles. In order to have them be the correct form, however, and to be a bit less lumpy, I went in and began shaving the edges down. I started off by doing this with my utility knife and then went in with scissors to smooth out and carve the muscles even more. I then did this to every single piece, which took ages. Seriously, if you're ever going to make a muscle suit, give yourself plenty of time to do it. I thought this would take me a couple days tops, but the whole process took me around 30 hours and I kept rubbing my fingers raw from the repetitive scissor motion, so please be careful. To make the feet, I cut holes for my ankles and then made a recess in the foam where my feet would eventually go. I then shaped the foot like I did with everything else. The gloves were a bit more difficult as I had to hot glue the foam to the gloves while I was wearing them. When doing this, make sure to spread out the hot glue in thin amounts so that you don't burn yourself. I started by gluing the pinky, then the ring and middle finger as one finger, then the index finger, the thumb, and finally the rest of the hand. Then I added some foam to smooth out all the areas where there were gaps. With this done, I began to shave away foam until I had a shape I was satisfied with. To attach the muscles to my body, I first needed to make sure the undergarments were ready. With the leggings, I sewed the foothole closed so that they acted as tights. I also added an opening to the back of the shirt so that I could slip on the muscle suit and close it at the back later on. With the muscles all carved out and the undergarments ready, I planned out the order to put on the muscles and got to work. With this, it would be easiest to have help from someone else, and in my case, I had the lovely Johnny who was kind enough to offer his support for me. This took a very long time and please do it in multiple chunks and take lots of breaks as it can be very tiring for both people. But basically all we did was hot glue a small section of a muscle, attach that to the fabric, then add a bit more hot glue and slowly add the muscles on that way. Again, make sure the hot glue is applied in a spread out manner so that there aren't any large globs of glue that will burn you. Another way to do this would be using a spray adhesive, which can be a bit messy but won't be as hot and it would probably be a lot faster as well. Finally, after four hours of gluing, we had all of the muscles on the suit and I was feeling very cool. I was finding my leggings were slipping down a bit with this extra weight, so I quickly added some nylon webbing suspenders which I glued and sewed onto the tops of the leggings. Now that everything was secure and staying where it needed to, I had another lovely friend help me with gluing the shirt to the leggings and then we got to work creating the fabric patterns. At this point, I would like to give a huge shout out to my friend Ali, who not only helped me out with making all the pattern pieces and gluing down the fabric as you'll see later, but they also provided me with all of the upholstery foam that I used in this project after I found out that upholstery foam from local shops is surprisingly really expensive. So without them, I literally would not have been able to make this monstrosity and you can blame it all on them, basically. To create the patterns for the fabric, we covered each part of myself in cling film and then covered that in masking tape. Once the entire area was covered, Ali drew on the seams and cut the cling film and tape off of me. They did this for the legs, the front of the body, the back, and the arms. I then used these patterns as the base for what would become the actual patterns. Because the muscle suit is very lumpy, I knew we would lose a lot of fabric when gluing it into all of the crevices, so I added a lot of seam allowance just to be safe. This ended up being a bit excessive, but I'm glad I did this. Once I had my paper patterns, I laid out my fabric and just had to take the chance to lay down on it. There was just so much and I was very, very sleepy. Once I ripped myself away from the fabric, I put all of the pattern pieces down to make sure I had enough fabric for everything and then cut everything out. I did the same thing on the lighter fabric and finally had everything ready to be glued onto the suit. 
At first, Ali tried to attach the fabric by pinning it into place to make sure everything lined up properly and then hot gluing it on. After doing this for a little bit though, I became worried that the moment I've moved my body, the fabric would just tear away from the foam. So we decided to try a different method. We moved the whole operation outside and began to use a spray adhesive to attach the fabric to the suit. Yes, some of my neighbors did see me. No, they haven't spoken to me since. Honestly, I'm not really sure why. When applying the fabric, Ali would spray a small section and try to mold the fabric into each of the crevices. If there were any areas where the fabric was wrinkly, they would then pull the fabric up a bit and smooth this out even more. Basically, if you finagle the fabric long enough, you can work out a lot of the wrinkles. Obviously, there will still be some, but he's just a slightly wrinkly hippo, and I think that's perfectly normal. I mean, look at a real hippo. Also, if you're going to do the spraying method, please work in a well-ventilated area and wear a respirator or mask as this stuff isn't great to get into your lungs. With the fabric glued on, Ali went in and pinned where the seams would need to be so that once it was off, I would still know where to sew and then they cut away some of the excess fabric. I then went in and cut away even more excess fabric and pinned it into place. In order for me to hand sew these seams, I needed the fabric to be tucked underneath so that only the right sides of the fabric were showing. After everything was pinned, I began hand sewing the seams closed. It was at this point that Luna informed me that the hippo was going to in fact be hers. Give it to me now! And then claimed it as her throne. Look at that face. I wasn't about to tell her to get up. She's so stinking cute. With Luna on her rightful throne, I continued to sew the arm and basically continued doing this until the entire body didn't have any raw edges showing anymore. For the feet, after spraying them on, I hot glued the edges to the bottom of the foot to keep them out of the way. When hot gluing fabric to the foam, I found it really helpful to put a pin in the place where I had just glued so that the glue could fully dry. Then when later removing the pins, your fabric will stay in place and have a solid grip to the foam. To finish the gloves, I did the same steps as the bodysuit and pinned all of the fabric into place before hand sewing the edges. Finally, with everything sewn, I then decided I wanted everything to pop a bit more and quickly went over the muscle lines with a darker paint. I used an airbrush to do this for the majority of the costume, however, if you don't have one, you can easily go in with a super watered down acrylic paint and use some fabric scraps to rub the paint in, giving it a soft edge. Finally, I wanted to add some nails to the hands and feet, so I took some 2mm foam and cut it into rounded rectangular shapes, which I then heat sealed to be able to paint more effectively. I covered this in Plasti Dip as a primer and then painted them in a light blue color. Once dry, I then hot glued them onto the gloves and the feet. Finally, with everything done, I added some thick 10mm foam to the bottoms of the feet to give me a sole, and the bodysuit was done. This just leaves the head, which, let's be honest, this will be the making or breaking point of this costume. So let's get to it. To make the head, I started off by tracing the profile of my face and then mapping out where the mechanism would lie. Once I had that, I created a pattern for the profile of the hippo's head. Like with the muscles, I then cut this out of upholstery foam. With this, I cut out three layers of my really thick foam, which I would later carve into the correct shape. Before I was ready to do that, however, I needed to get my ski mask ready. To make a movable jaw, I had seen some fursuit creators do this method of gluing on elastic around the top of the head and under the chin. With the ski mask ready, I prepared the foam pieces by cutting a hole for where my head would go. I went ahead and cut out the middle and side pieces before gluing them together to make the process easier later. I also cut a hole for my gutter pipe to go through. With those holes cut, I glued all of the pieces together and began to shave away some of the foam. I used the same method as the muscles by starting off with a utility knife and later using scissors to make everything neater. Once everything was done, I hollowed out the design to make it a bit lighter for me to wear. I then did the exact same things to the jaw pieces, starting by cutting out the holes, shaving it down, and then hollowing it out. With the pieces prepped to be attached to the ski mask, I started hot gluing them on. If you want a jaw that will move up and down, be sure to attach it to the elastic and nothing else on the chin. With it now on, I did some more trimming with scissors and added some foam to the top of the head, which connected to the back for a bit more stability. For the details like the nose, eyebrows, and ears, I used more upholstery foam and carved the general shape I wanted. With the head constructed, I went over it in cling film and duct tape to create pattern pieces, which were later transferred onto the same fabric that I used for the bodysuit. Unlike the bodysuit, I was able to use my sewing machine to put some of the pieces together first. To make sure I was putting the right pieces together, I started by laying them out on the foam head and sewing separate chunks together. With all of the smaller sections done, I sewed those together until I had an entire top 
piece and an entire bottom piece. Before applying them to the foam, I added some black fabric over the ski mask so that my face would be completely hidden once I was wearing it. I just hot glued this into place and it holds really well. I then started the process of hot gluing the fabric onto the head. I again added pins to each section that I had just glued to make sure everything stayed in place to cool and this allowed for everything to have a very strong hold once the pins were removed. I also added some pink fabric to the inside of the mouth. To finish it off, I turned the raw edges inside and just hot glued this as well. To create the side seams, I pinned together the flaps and hand stitched them together so that they had enough room for the head to still move up and down. For the nose, ears, and eyebrows, I glued the fabric down on top and hid the raw edges on the underside of each of them. On the ears, I had so much excess fabric, I did have to go in and sew in the seams to make it look a bit cleaner. To make the tongue, I drew out a basic shape on more pink fabric, sewed along the line, turned it right side out, and then sewed another line right down the middle. For the eyes, I used white fabric and used black acrylic paint to draw on some basic anime-esque eyes. To make the teeth, I used polymer clay and aluminum foil, which I later painted white. To finish off the head, I did some quick airbrushing and then added the various face features by hot gluing them in, and of course added the all-important teeth. How else is this hippo supposed to eat enough to support this muscular body? Finally, with everything covered in fabric, you can slide the head over the mechanism, lock it into place, and you are ready to chomp away. With the head done, we are now on to the last part of this video. That is right, it is time for the reveal, and honestly, I'm not sure if you're ready to witness this. It is unlike anything I've ever done before, and good god, is it silly. Everyone, please welcome the newest member to the board game cosplay family. The very hungry, hungry hippo.